going to be talking about uh, the basics of concrete pipe. Uh, my name is Eric. I work with Forterra. I've been with the company for six years now. Uh, currently, I'm the production supervisor. Uh, I've started with the company as a quality control. Um, I did that for about two years, and then I did uh, another two years in the engineering department. And uh, I also take care of the, the field services uh, for, our, for our company. My name's Lauren, I'm with MCON. Uh, I'm in charge of dispatch. Uh, I've been doing so for nine years. Uh, so I'm the guy who gets all the stuff to site. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so we'll go through some common terminology on a concrete pipe. Uh, over here we have what's called the bell. Uh, the bell of the pipe provides a reinforcement to the joint. Uh, on the opposite end, we have a, a spigot. The spigot's purpose is to provide the uh, profile for the, uh, the gasket. It gives it somewhere to roll, it makes that watertight seal. Uh, in between the two joints is what's called the barrel of the pipe. And from the bottom of the pipe up to the start of the spigot is what's called the lay length. All our products include a stencil. Uh, it's a requirement under CSA uh, A257. So the information on the stencils is, is the same between the two companies. Uh, it, it has your manufacturer, uh, location of the manufacturer, the date the pipe was made, uh, the type of cement being used to make the pipe, and then we have the uh, specification that it was made to, and then the most important is the, the size and class. Uh, so size and class, very important when it gets to jobs with uh, multiple classes on it. You get uh, a 140D class compared to a 65D, which is a lot lower in strength. Uh, it's very important the contractor doesn't mix those up, so these stencils become important. Uh, the, other, the other part of the stencil we have here is the P. Uh, the P certifies that the pipe's been quality controlled. Uh, it's a requirement under the uh, CPCQA. Uh, it's a national quality program throughout Canada. Uh, it's a requirement in the city of Ottawa, actually, that the precast components being used are certified under the CPCQA. So it's important to see that P on the, uh, the products. Uh, for lifting, we have uh, three common types of lifting pins. Uh, we have a four ton pin, an eight ton pin, and a 20 ton pin. Uh, the four ton pin will use in everything from 975 up to an 1800 diameter uh, pipe or manhole component. Just vary in, in length to account for wall, different wall thicknesses. Uh, the 8 ton pin will use this in a 1950 diameter up to a 2700 diameter. And then the 20 ton pin, we use this in our 3000 diameter and 3600 diameter products. Uh, each lifting pin has its own uh, bell size. Uh, it's important that you use the proper bell size with the proper pin, otherwise you'll risk slipping or not being able to get it on in the first place. Uh, the, lifting, the lifting pins are very important that it, they be used according to the uh, manufacturer's recommendations. The, uh, there's a certain way you have to lift when you're handling products. Uh, with pipe, you want to make sure your angle is not too tight, uh, otherwise you risk um, spalling concrete. It's the same thing with risers, you want to make sure you're lifting straight up, uh, not pulling too much on the, on the spigot of the, the riser. Okay, uh, we'll get into the uh, reinforcing cages. So we have two different types of reinforcing cages here today, a uh, single cage and a uh, triple cage. There's also a, a double cage, which are the three common uh, types of cages we use in our, our pipes. So a single cage will use that and anything from 12 inch to 24 inch diameter. Uh, the double cage starts, we start using that from 27 inch up to 42 inch, uh, all, all the way up to 3000 actually, but uh, 42 inch, uh, 54 inches here, that's when we start getting into uh, triple cage designs for higher strength uh, pipes. So this one here, the triple cage we're looking at is a 140D. It's a high strength pipe, so we have an extra layer of steel. Uh, and the reason for that extra layer of steel is when the pipes are being loaded, you can see the, the uh, diagram here. In the red is, are your tension zones. Uh, so when you start getting into high lo heavy loading, you want to make sure you're getting extra steel area in those tension zones. Uh, reason for that is you want to avoid the amount of cracking you're getting. Uh, concrete cracks, we expect it to crack. I have a little uh, foam here, it kind of demonstrates the properties of concrete. So when you, when you put concrete under compression, what you're getting is a, a very good result, you're not getting cracking or anything. 
But as soon as you start to put some tension on that concrete, you get the uh, you get cracking. So we expect cracking in the pipe. Uh, we didn't, we account for it. We test our pipes uh, to to meet a certain level. Uh, so we have two criteria when we do our testing. We do our testing in a three edge bearing machine. Uh, we have a design load and an ultimate load testing criteria. So with the design load, it's, it's basically a crack, uh, the width of 0.01 of an inch. That's, that's what an acceptable crack is. Uh, we're, we, when, what we're doing when we're testing is we're squeezing the pipe and measuring that crack width until it opens up to a 0.01 of an inch. And at that point, we record the results. And if it meets the requirements of that uh, pipe class, and then we're able to stencil it as that pipe class and sell it as that pipe class. If it doesn't meet the requirements of that, it meets a lower one, we're able to re-stencil that and use it as that instead. Uh, there's a, a certain frequency we have to do for the uh, three edge bearing testing. Uh, we typically, we start at the, at the start of a run. We'll do a test to make sure the run's good. And then after that, it's one in every 400 pieces that are tested. Um, I think I covered everything there. Take over. So, I'm going to get into a couple of things. I'm going to touch on a few topics. Uh, first and foremost is unloading. So I'm going to skip right to the don't. We'll get to the do after. It's hard to see up here, but in this little uh, picture here, they've got a uh, lifting apparatus around the bell of the pipe. That's not how you lift pipe. That's how you could till a field with a pipe. Well, we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go over to this pipe here to try and make the contactor's life a little easier we put on these dots on all the pipes. It shows the center mass of the pipe so they know where they need to put their lifting straps, loops, chains, cables, whatever they happen to use on site to actually lift with. So lift here and lift here, and they can do it safely and effectively. Moving on to the larger size pipes, we always supply them with pins cast in, heavier pipe, a little more safety. So with Eric, I'm not sure if he mentioned earlier enough, but we both use products supplied by Dayton Superior. That includes the pins and the lifting shackles. These make contractors' lives a lot easier. Kind of takes all the brain science out of it. They simply swivel on, lock in place, same pin on the opposite side, and it's a successful lift every time. As Eric also mentioned, they come in three different sizes depending on the size of the actual pipe or the manhole structure that they're lifting. Now this 450 pipe that we have on display here, the small guy here up on Dunnage, that's key when it comes to unloading materials on site. It's supposed to be up on wood or, or Dunnage in cases, what we call it. That way it keeps it off the ground. I can tell working in dispatch, a lot of materials that come back to us from job sites, whether it be they ordered too much, uh, sections of the job got canceled. I can tell when those pipe come in on the flatbed how they've been stored without a doubt. The bottoms of the bells will be chipped, the spigots will be cracked, and I'll know that it wasn't stored on site with dunnage properly. It's supposed to be supported past the, past the bell at the barrel at this point, and also close to the spigot at this point. That ensures that the pipe is intact on site. All pipes and manholes come with gaskets. They ensure a watertight seal. Those gaskets cannot be left outside they can't be left in the sun, they can't be left in the cold, and they can't be thrown in the dirt. A lot of the time, if they are, dirt, debris, grease, mud will get into that gasket and it will either a, corrode the seal or just ensure that it doesn't fit properly. It won't roll on, it won't ensure a water fit tight. As I said, they can't be left in the sun. Sun and rubber don't mix. They crack, they become brittle, and they're just, again, they can't guarantee a watertight seal. For winter installation, it's critical that they remain at room temperature or brought up to room temperature. They have to be stored inside for that matter. Uh, a cold gasket, it's a brittle gasket and it doesn't seal properly. We tell contractors, uh, put them in your site office, put them in your truck, put them in a sea can, just don't leave them outside. We tend to send them in a box to discourage them leaving them anywhere. I'll, I'm gonna touch briefly on our bills of lading. It's just you gentlemen may not be familiar with these. Normally this will go to the contractor. But there's a lot of key information on here. Uh, primarily who the supplier is, who the customer is, where the job site is, any relevant delivery information, uh, prime, and most importantly, the products that are coming to site. Uh, and this option here will show you that 
There's a product code, there's an amount, a quantity, and there's a description of it. So in this case, 43, 450 class, 100, 140D pipe came to site. All those gaskets, all 40, uh, sorry, all 43 of those pipe are supposed to have 43 gaskets. So just running through this checklist simply, you verify your delivery slip, the pipe size and the number, the pipe strength class. Um, let's say there might be multiple runs of similar pipe but different classes. You have 100D run on one side and a 140D run on the other side, you don't want to mix them up. So it's, it's critical that they point those things out. So 43 pipe, 43 gaskets, and they have to inspect every piece of product that comes to site. Uh, if there's any sort of damage on the bell or the spigot and they don't report it, then it's a little harder for us to say, okay, Mr. Customer, we'll exchange that pipe for you, no problem. So they have to note those things. And in that case, they have to inform us as the manufacturer any deficiencies, defects, so we can in turn help them out. These delivery slips, it's no different than if you get a delivery from the Home Depot, the Brick, Future Shop, Best Buy, you, know, you wouldn't accept the fridge with a boot mark in it. So same principle kind of applies. And uh, that more or less will wrap it up for me. Uh, before we move on, are there any questions?